Christians are often viewed as second-class citizens in Egypt, where nearly 90% of the population is Muslim. Believers are often the target of mistreatment and abuse. The man in our next story knows what it means to suffer for the sake of the gospel, but it has not deterred this former Muslim from telling others about Jesus. Ali grew up in a devout Islamic home, where he was taught to hate Christians, Jews, and any non-Muslim. His mother hosted three weekly meetings teaching Muslim women about Islam. Year after year, I started to get far from the God of Islam because I couldn't understand how a God could have all that hatred. I was hearing stories about the Prophet Muhammad and how he killed hundreds of thousands of people and led 27 invasions against different tribes. While Ali became disillusioned about Islam, one of his brothers was becoming more devout and eventually rose to leadership in a militant Islamic group that committed terrible acts of violence, including murder. Ali would leave Islam and become an atheist. Over the next few years, he spent a lot of time reading. He even picked up a Bible just for general reading. He read the Bible every day for a year spending most of his time studying the Gospels. To my surprise, I found a person like Jesus Christ, filled with all that love. Jesus not only loves his followers, those who love him, but even his enemies. That was a surprise. And that surprise led Ali to become a follower of Jesus Christ. But it came with a cost. I was rejected by my family and my colleagues at school. I started to be called up by security. I was beaten at school in the mornings and called up by security in the afternoon every single day. In 1990, I was jailed. It was during that time that Ali was tortured again, this time brutally. He was beaten, hung upside down and electrocuted in an effort to convince him to return to Islam. You are totally naked and your hands tied behind your back and a blindfold is put over your eyes and they electrocute you in a very sensitive area. But the imprisonment and intense torture failed to persuade Ali to renounce Christ and give up the names of other Christians. In fact, he says his many sufferings have deepened his faith and for that he is grateful. Being tortured pushed me to be stronger than I was. I don't think they could understand a faith that was in the heart. They were focusing on the external. I was able to withstand the torture over the years. All my answers were trying to tell them why I became a Christian, and they were totally provoked by my answers that I was trying to evangelize them. Ali is now in ministry, working with those who, like himself, have left Islam for Christianity to help them grow in their relationship with God and encourage them, and to help them with their physical needs like finding a place to live and employment. Many are cut off from their families or fired from their jobs for becoming Christians.